because the theme to this is so hard to sing, mm. I start to go into Big Little Lies instead. Yeah. <laughs> I start to... Hello, everybody. I'm Will. And I'm Kristen. And this is So I'm Watching the White Lotus, Season 2, Episode 5. 5. That's Amore. Beautiful. I like Mia's voice. Me too. I think I she's really... I think she's talented. I think she could easily be a hotel lounge singer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> My girl Trish is talented. Aim high. <laughs> oh, boy. If you give a mouse a cookie. Me? No. Oh. Every character oh. on this show. Mm-hmm. That's fair. <laughs> I am riveted. Yeah, I know. Riveted. This is a my lot of fun. favorite kind of drama where it's just really great actors sort of lounging around in amazing clothes and hair and makeup implying things. And having slightly cryptic conversations. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think Aubrey Plaza is doing Oh yeah. So good. Yeah. I I hate Harper, but oh. I think Aubrey Plaza is doing amazing. <laughs> but I, I I understand. I mean, I get oh, yeah. Harper. It just I've been Harper before. In the, we've all been Harper before. <laughs> in the I'm going down and taking everybody Everyone. with me, and I just I love the game they're playing, and um, I, only sort of. Okay, she is playing a game of her own creation and everyone else thinks they're playing a different game and she is playing emotional marriage chicken and they don't know that. Well, Daphne, I was waiting to see if there was going to be a specific moment where I thought you could pinpoint Daphne figuring out what was going on and I think she's just, no, she just kind of. She definitely just knows and she also did not accidentally show a picture of the kids. That was way on purpose. She was like, have a baby and then forget about it. (laughs) Which is not rock solid advice. Well, but it's not 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 rock solid. (laughs) Like You can handle it. That's the thing. Is it works for Daphne, it would not work for Harper. She already and this is not shade on Aubrey Plaza. The makeup is doing it. The makeup department is doing it on purpose. She looks haggard. <laughs> she is. She's been awake for two nights straight. She's been nonstop drinking and smoking and worrying, and she looks bad. <laughs> she cannot handle this lifestyle. No, I, it's not sustainable. Yeah. It's not sustainable. But Daphne. But with, 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 gets it. with the playing the game, more so. What I meant is, it's like I because I do re- I do feel for Ethan. It, it, I think he's I think he's naive. Yeah. And I don't know what he expected going into this. Mm-hmm. this the whole is what, vacation. The vacation. Yeah. This is what he should have expected. I mean, look. Because I, I Especially sort of, because they knew each other. He and Cameron knew each other in college. He, he you're totally right. He should have expected something like this. But I think he wants to uh, like uh, there is the the way they have played with Ethan and Cameron's relationship. And the level of attraction Mm -hmm. between the two of them, because there is it's absolutely homoerotic. I don't know how much of it I believe is they truly want to sleep with each other. No, I think it's more psychosexual. It's just that alpha male sort of beta male who's becoming an alpha male. But I think and, and I think there's a type of straight or mostly straight bisexual man that. It's more so the idea or mm-hmm. the thought or the option. Well, it's, okay. I think they're really compelled by Cameron, especially. I think yeah. he's really compelled by it being an option, but I don't know that he actually sure. wants. But also, in each of their minds, they are topping the other mm. because it's like a power play, a hundred percent. And then all of the stuff that came out at that dinner about how, like, Cameron used to find out what girls Ethan was into and then fuck them first. Mm-hmm. I can't. I feel okay. I feel like Ethan is Albie in 10 years. I wasn't ready to go to Albie. Yet. We don't have to yet. <laughs> I'd rather just not talk about Albie. <laughs> um. I want my vindication. 
Um, no, I, I, I truly do think that, like I said, it, it, it's, it's maybe there's a different word than naive because I think Ethan is naive in a different way than Albie is. I think Albie's yeah. more idealistic, mm-hmm. and and so in that case, I think Ethan is naive. I don't think Albie's naive, but I think he's got a he's he's a white knight, one hundred and ten percent, and he's going to take the wrong lessons from all of this stuff. Every inch of it, yeah, because he's going to Lucia is going to screw him over. Uh, yep. And he's going to hate women. Mm -hmm. And that's not the moral he should take from this (laughs) encounter. Because it's already, he's like, he's already done it again. He's already, like, not 24 hours have passed. And he's already devoting his life to Lucia, to rescuing her from... From this, like, mysterious pimp pimp that that we've never seen nor heard of. And that man, when they had the gelato, is absolutely... That is a dude that she also fucks, and he was just trying to like get it in, and she played it off like he was harassing her Mm -hmm. for the benefit of Albie. Mm -hmm. I'm, I guarantee it. And the thing, I do like Albie. I, I I do see potential, or I do have not anymore. (laughs) Oh, actually, if we're throwing people in the trash, Tanya. Mm. I've been very sympathetic to Tanya and I understand yeah. her faults oh, and yeah. her problems and stuff like that. But the way she talked about Natasha, um, Natasha Rothwell in yeah. this episode was almost sickening to me yeah. because I truly believed I see the best in people a lot of the time, not all the time, but I, I truly believed that she was sort of oblivious to what to was the go- damage that she was yeah. doing. And the fact that she even, that she not only remembers Natasha Rothwell, mm-hmm. but then- Because if she had just totally forgotten about her, we had never heard from maybe her Maybe she's just that Adult. daffy, yeah. you know what I mean? But the fact that she's like, oh, I bet you that woman was a witch and cursed me, and now that's why I'm having, like, the fact that she managed to turn herself into yeah. the victim of that scenario. She's also trying to annul her marriage to Greg. Yeah. I mean, I did Jennifer Coolidge is delicious, and I was nervous, uh, 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 uh I was nervous about her coming back and her character yeah. because I was sort of like, is that going to be gilding the lily? Like, is that going to be too much? And I am enjoying what we're getting from Tanya. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what the future of this show looks like. I don't know if this is three seasons, five seasons. or I don't know what we're dealing with. Yeah. But I am enjoying it. She. The way that this show is able to threaten you I, mm-hmm. with with such it's so sinister at times mm-hmm. and it's I've mentioned it a few times before and the only word I came up with was magic it fl- threatens you like it's going to a magic place and uh, of like, course I don't like, mean like unicorns and fairies it's like, like an eyes wide shut type of place yeah there's just and I love this is what I want the, the people good no one on this, these shows are particularly likable. So when we talk about liking or disliking people, we're talking about within yeah. the grand scheme of this show. These are rich people behaving badly. Yeah. This is what I want from gods. Yeah, this is what I want sure. from Olympians. And uh, they're beautiful and doing terrible, like dangerous liaisons. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. Yeah. And so uh, I don't know if I finished Harper and Cameron and Daphne. Harper's gonna fuck Cameron. She's going well, to. Cameron's gonna fuck Harper. Nope. Harper's going to fuck Cameron and she's going to hate herself. She's going to hate it. Yeah, but she's going to she's going to ruin all of it because then Daphne's not even going to be her friend. I don't I Daphne is a sociopath. I have no idea. What. I love. <laughs> oh, no, Daphne. I love her, too. I love her, too. But I just I have no I, Daphne. I, I don't know that she, I could call her a sociopath. She's very <laughs> compartmentalized. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I don't know that I could go full. Yeah, sociopath. I don't know. So that that's, maybe they'll have a threesome. And just leave Ethan out. That's <laughs> diabolical. Ethan's kind of a drip. I, yeah, well, and Harper could be like, well. Yeah, you, you don't, don't want to fuck me, so. There's just something so mm-hmm. vicarious about watching people succumb to their basis instincts. Yeah, yeah. And those times where you just want to do the worst. You don't care that it's bad for you. You just want to sure. do it out of spite. Like, it, it's so Greek, Italian, Roman. Mm-hmm. It's so it of is, this. It is that, yeah. <laughs> it definitely is that. Um. So uh, 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 so we, do, we, we have Tanya. And the gays in Palermo. So you think they're house poor? Is that a yeah. thing I can say? Yeah. What what specific? I mean, I so 
when he was 32, his father died and left him the villa. Uncle, I thought. What's a father? Father. Okay. His father died, left him the villa, but uh, and, and the like insane upkeep. He mentioned that early. This is glass onion knives out. Yeah. There are nothing but clues. Yeah. And Tanya is just no, not. It's nothing. <laughs> and so she makes a comment to Portia where she's like, it's so nice to to know that you're around rich people because you you know they don't want money from you. And I was like, girl, they do want money for you because this house is beautiful. And then he makes another comment about like not getting a government subsidy because they can only get the subsidy if they open it to the public for like tours and shit. And they refuse to do that. So he doesn't, he is just like a seemingly a layabout. He doesn't do anything or have a job. He's so, trying to sell her on joining this fantasy and funding it. Yeah. Hundred percent. So, Which, so I don't. If it were that upfront, yeah, not the worst. Like no. move in with a commune of gay men and fund their lavish parties. <laughs> and- <laughs> Look, but that's the thing is like I'm I'm less convinced now that they're trying to like honey trap her. So, like into like I'm I'm less convinced that Greg is involved with this. Oh now, no, I I didn't buy that. But, it's a good it's a good theory. Yeah, but that level, in my opinion, my, I'm not sure Greg is up for that. That level of machinations <laughs> yeah. is what this show does. The show is more subtle. I yeah, think. I think Greg is still cheating. Yeah, but I think that they are just trying to like dupe her into mm-hmm. like that. And I think that that is such a talent on the productions uh part that relatively straightforward stories can yeah. feel so insidious mm-hmm. and so deep and like and again that we can go to these places in our minds because yeah. that's kind of what it feels like when you're in the thick of it but they took her to the opera she may or may not have been tacky with the there's no queen of sicily i don't think so like right i, I don't was, know i, I think that was so. just a woman i think he- <laughs> I think he was just teasing her and then she like <laughs> tackily waved at this fancy Italian lady. <laughs> and and the the what sold it for me was what's his face? Nips. Sensitive Jack. Nips was Jack stealing the like ditch dining and what yeah. do they call it? Dorm dining dish. dash. dash. Door, door, dong, ditch. Is that what you said? <laughs> Doorbell, ding, dong, ditch. Ding, dong, ditch. Died and dash. Yeah. The second they did that, I was like, oh, they literally, they literally don't have money. And yeah. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, these two women. And but again, I like that. It's like regardless of your feelings on Alby, it's like Portia is prioritizing this man. And I mean, she said at the what? Portia wanted to have a fun vacation fling. Mm-hmm. That is what she's doing. Albie but wants it, to marry her. <laughs> like, but I'm saying, had she, the true, no, I get, yeah, I understand. But it's like, she talks about how, literally, in the beginning of this season, she was like, I always pick the wrong guy. I yeah. always do the wrong thing. And it's like, and yet here we go. Yeah. So you think he's not. Not what? The nephew. I don't know if he's not the nephew. <laughs> the nephew part is irrelevant. <laughs> but he's, he's fucking his uncle. He is quite, quite literally fucking Quentin. We have confirmation. Con- full confirmation. <laughs> full penis and butt confirmation. <laughs> and he also, I love the way that he phrased it, where Portia was like, do you want to like go like wherever? And he was like, I have to do something for my uncle real quick. And I was like. And then it was seemingly hours later because Tanya had already gone to bed and then woken up from something and was wandering this palazzo in the middle of the night. (laughs) Dear reader, I was like, you are going to stumble upon sex rights. Like, I have no, there's going to be a goat. I I can't. Yeah. Uh, So Portia, I mean. If she truly does not get like hurt or taken advantage of, then great. I love this sure, for her. Yeah. But she's having the time of her life, and I just don't think. Yeah, I, I mean, don't think she's prepared for what she's. I definitely <laughs> think she's in over her head, and I definitely uh-huh. think she's not prepared. But I, she was not attracted to Albie, and she didn't want to be with no. him, and she was just like trying to make it happen because I think she's a people pleaser. Well, and I want, yeah, I wanted to defend her a little bit because a lot of people were talking about how awful she was for like standing him up and stuff like that. And I don't think at any point last week, she, I don't think her mind was like, "Yes, I'm going to string him along no. just to." I, I think she just sort of. Also, prioritized. Not for nothing. She's at work. 
she can't just again. Tanya is an insane person. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm mostly when, on Porsche. I side. got nervous yeah. when Tanya found out that they were having sex on the boat. Oh, because I was, was like, oh, if mad. Tanya yeah. finds out she's having more fun than her, yeah. Tanya will ruin this. And she didn't. But she was like, I'm so jealous. I found the conversation between Quentin, Tom Hollander and Tanya. Riven, yeah. Where the whole who it was like, it was like. About how uh, beauty is his It weakness. was like a Christmas carol for me. It yeah. was Ghosts of Christmas Future, where he was talking about, yeah, I fell in love once with a straight guy. <laughs> I would have died for him, still will. But no, he was like, love was never my Achilles yeah. heel, but beauty is. And God damn it, you know. Uh, Which explains Jack a little more mm -hmm. if they are, in fact, not related. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And well, again, it is Sicily. I mean, I've already thrown down the word Olympians. <laughs> We're yeah, sort but of like they are just English. They are true. just English men. They're not from Sicily. I don't. Ugh, I don't know. Um, and then Valentina has been a fascinating character. Boy, I don't know. She is a lot. Uh, I and, like, and she's not. She doesn't get a lot. Like she no. doesn't monopolize a lot of the storytelling. Yeah. But I don't know. It's so interesting to me. Like, she's obviously trying to get Isabella, like, like alone, like isolated, I guess, at the front desk. But like, I don't totally get what her beef is with Rocco, except that he makes Isabella laugh. But I, the thing is, it's like if, if she is jealous, she doesn't know. That she is jealous. She, ge I think she genuinely believes that he's distracted. That her? he's and he makes Isabella uncomfortable. Oof. And it, clearly, she's lonely. Valentina. Yeah, a hundred percent. That that conversation with Mia, and mm -hmm. this is this is again to that point I was saying where it's like this show can make relatively straightforward stories. Yeah. So compelling because when Mia was like, "Well, you like women," yeah. I was like. <gasps> <laughs> that, she just, that she just could tell she just yeah. was staring at her oh. and i also i so here's the thing too is i love how like at first mia was like absolutely i can't have sex for money and now she's like i'll fucking eat you out all night long if you let me keep playing the piano at this hotel <laughs> i don't know i i like i said i'm finding it fascinating i am riveted yeah um it's, it's um funny. i don't know about the other degrasso men they were playing you know the emotional blame. Yeah. Last midnight. That's the thing. That's the thing where. So, okay. Albie and, and uh, Lucia were having sex. And then she was like, what about my two grand? She asked him for the money. Just FYI. Um, and he was like, oh shit, I didn't know. And then when he's sitting down with his dad and his grandpa, his immediate first thought is, well, she's probably poor and in like a really bad situation. So he can rescue her. Disgusting. Disgusting. Um, and then Dominic and Bert were sort of just like, like sort of having the same conversation as always where it was like I knew you were fooling around and so did mom and she hated you and Bert's like why didn't she leave and I'm like you are a hundred years old that's what I was, I was literally about to be like not for nothing but the world changes yeah like she had no options all she did was have your Italian babies for 40 years and then she couldn't do anything and the thing is, because I do find Bert to be relatively charming and so I am a little bit inclined to take his word over what is it, uh, Dominic? Dominic? Uh, no, I don't take his you word so? over Dominic. It's all of, like Dominic is slightly better than Bert, and Albie is slightly better than Dominic. But it's going to take seven or eight more generations before the Degrassos the have these like out. a good man because it's like. <laughs> R.I.P. the comments. Each of them are <laughs> each of them are learning the wrong lesson. Where Bert uh -huh. was like, "I didn't have sex with escorts," and it's like, "Well, then the implication is that you had sex with her friends or something." Or like people, yeah. People at least it was an honest transaction. Exactly. If it was, and so it's pay like, your sex workers. Also, no one's paying these girls. <laughs> Cameron still hasn't paid her yeah. all the money he owes her, and so I'm just sort of like. Just because the son can see what the father's doing wrong doesn't mean he's going to learn the right lessons from that, which is goes to your point about Albie. Albie is not learning the right lessons from, like, 
knowing that his dad sleeps with escorts and then he's sleeping with escorts and then, you know, but he believes that he can save her because he believes that there's something inherently wrong and dirty and shameful about what she's doing as opposed to she likes having sex and she's hot and she's good at it and she just does it. Trying to get in while the getting's good. <laughs> if I had ever for one moment in my life looked like that woman, I might have tried it. <laughs> but I just like, I, I don't know. It's like it's like a whole gross kind of cycle. And Albie thinks that he is as superior as you can get to his father and grandfather. But he's falling into all of the same issues and pitfalls. It's just he's doing it from a more morally honor. superior well, yeah. superior is that is and he's like he thinks he's doing an honorable mm -hmm. thing and it's not honorable he's gonna get his ass whooped by that italian guy <laughs> <laughs> we only had two episodes left I'm i like... know i know like it's i wish it was eight i think i wish it was eight <laughs> well and again the first season was only six so yeah yeah oh yeah i'm loving it um i think that's it yeah yeah i think that's it i it also feel like somebody's gonna Somebody's getting their head cut off, but yeah, I mean, it's not really that type of show either, but still. Yeah, but all of the head statues, mm -hmm. I feel like it has to. So, all right, uh, like and subscribe. The thumbs up does the best for us. We have a website, so I'm watching .com. Everything links up from there. We also have a Patreon. Uh, we've been a little bit on break. We will pick up with our Teen Wolf and our Lost and Riverdale coverage. The first week of December, there's been a lot going on. I'm moving. There was holidays, so um, We're back it's, it. it's coming. It's coming. So um, hope you had fun and bye. Bye.